in the 1980s when artists like Madonna and Cindy Lauper were having fun with sexy lyrics, an exception burst onto the scene, making headlines with their jazzy, smooth sound and elegant style. This is the story of Shade, the band, the legend and the incredible woman at its core. My first memory of Sade is connected with King of Sorrow. I was probably 15 and I listened to the old CD with that song until it just broke into two pieces. What memories do you have tied to Sade's music? Share your stories on the comments below as we unfold the elegant tapestry of Sade's career. Many think that Sade is a singer with a smooth, slightly raspy voice and a magnificent style and looks, which is technically correct and incorrect at the same time. If you search Sade on Wikipedia, you will find two articles, one about the band and the other one about the singer. Now, let's get dive deeper into the details. First, let's talk about the band. Guitar and saxophone, Stuart Matthewman, keyboard, Andrew Hale, bass guitar, Paula Stenman and of course Helen Paula Shade Adu or simply Shade as vocals. Her story starts on January 16, 1959 in Ibadan, Nigeria. Her mother was an English nurse and her father was Nigerian lecturer of economics. When Shade was four years old, her parents separated. Hayes, her mother, returned to England with Shade and her elder brother Banji to live with their grandparents near Colchester, Essex. Now let's get back to where does the name Shade comes from? My actual, my true Nigerian name, or the true Nigerian pronunciation, or as close as I can get to it, is Bola Shade, uh, which means crown and glory. Crown and glory, that's probably what Destiny had in store for the band, given their major success. Let's talk numbers. Shade has six studio albums, each of one testament to their musical prowess. Every new release has spawned several multi-platinum hits, garnered top reviews from both critics and the audience, and sold over 75 million copies worldwide. The story of today's episode is going to be how Shade gets to crown and glory and becomes the inspiration to countless artists and myself. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment which song by Shade gets you the most. Let's go! It's not easy to talk about Shade, as she is one of the most private global artists in the industry. But what's interesting is that somehow everyone accepts her rules. You would probably never see the paparazzi running after her or waiting at her doorstep to get new shocking news from her life. She can easily disappear from the rudders of mass media for years and everybody knows and accepts that she will be back when she has something to say or wants to be back. A defining fact about her is that till her 20s, she did not even think of becoming a singer. The only thing that connected her with singing was her passion for soul music and singing in the shower. When she was 21, she graduated from London St. Martin School of Art as a fashion designer. Also, as a side hustle, she was working as a model. Her connection in the fashion industry is going to help her to boost up her career. Everything changed when her boyfriend oversees Shade singing in the shower. Astonished by her natural talent, he encourages her to step into the spotlight. An opportunity arose. Her old school friend needed a temporary vocalist for their band, as their regular singer had fallen ill just before a scheduled performance at a local pub. Reluctantly, Shade agreed to fill in. She later confessed that she had never felt more nervous in her life. It was her debut singing in front of an audience. The concert starts. She gathers all her courage and goes straight to the microphone. And her shoe gets stuck on the holiday stage. For the first three, four songs, she could not move and passed all the stages of the hell, from a panic to acceptance. But when the concert was done, she realized what an important experience it was. And also that she could transfer emotions even standing in the same spot and just vibing through the music. Later on, this will become her thing. Even now, if you watch her sing live, most of the time she stands in the same spot throughout the whole concert, but you can take an eye off her. Someone has to lose. I don't want to 
later on she became a back vocal singer for a just funk band Pride, which was an eight member band. This helped her to fight her stage fright, as it is much easier to perform when there are another seven people with you on the stage. During this time, she formed songwriting partnership with Pride's guitarist and saxophonist Stuart Matthew. Together, backed with Pride's rhythm section, they began doing their own sets at Pride gigs. In 1983, Shade and Matthew Mann split from Pride, alongside with keyboardist Andrew Hale, bassist Paul Denman and drummer Paul Cook, to form the band that will have the same name as the lead singer, Shade. The band recorded their first demo, which included two songs, Smooth Operator and Your Love is King. Your love is king. What's interesting is that Smooth Operator was Shade's first step in writing songs and became one of her band's most recognized songs so far. The band sends demo records to all major record studios and they all hated it. They all said the tracks were too long and too jazzy. They said, don't you know what's happening? Everything is electronic drums now, tears for fears or the pish mode. This was a bit of a blow because when we played them to people, we got a fantastic reaction, said Robin Miller, the producer of the Diamond Life album. Confident in their unique sound, the band was determined to showcase their talent and sway the major label's opinion. Shade taped into her fashion industry connection to secure a feature on the cover of a trendy magazine, The Face. Building on this exposure, the band organized a free concert at London's renowned Heaven nightclub. They invited every major label and prominent music journalist to attend. The event was overwhelming success, drawing such a large crowd that over a thousand fans had to be turned away due to the venue reaching full capacity. After this huge success, all the biggest labels, including the ones that hated the demo in the beginning, were eager to sign Shade. However, they presented an offer solely to Shade as a solo artist, proposing that she moves to US to record her debut album with legendary Quincy Jones. Unwilling to separate from her band, Shade countered with her own terms. The contract is going to include all four musicians. They are not receiving any one-time sum, but instead they are going to get 15% from album sales. This is something quite rare for a band that just started their career. The band are not limited with the timeframes for upcoming albums, and only they can decide when to publish a new album. The profit is always going to be divided into four equal parts. This were very unusual condition for a new band, but they demonstrated their strong commitment to staying together and maintaining their artistic standards. For some weird and probably unprecedented reason, Epic Records accepted the terms, and in 1984, Shade released their first album, Diamond Life. Diamond Life. Both critics and audience loved the album, which was acclaimed as bright, and unexpected. Just in the UK, the album sold more than 1 million copies. Stuart Matthewman mentioned in an interview, The band was young and naive. If any of us had been 10 or 20% better as musicians, it would have been horrible. It would have been too much. What made our sound special was that we were young and naive and we didn't know what we were doing. Next comes The Promise, Shade's second studio album, which was released in 1985. The album reached top of the Billboard 200, and from this point, Shade had always reached more commercial success in the US than in the UK. This makes sense, as at the time, soul, R&B or overall black music was dominating in the US and the audience was ready for Shade's sound. One of my favorite songs by Shade is in this album, The Swedish Taboo. In 1986, the band receives their first Grammy Award as the best new artist. In 1988, they released their third studio album, Stronger Than Pride. Again, amazing reviews from everyone and triple platinum status. 
What's interesting is that Shaddai's music is notable and you can always recognize their song even if it's the first time you hear their new song. But at the same time, they are not repetitive. I'm not sure I can remember from top of my head any other artist that does this as well as they do. Let me know in the comments if you have someone in mind. Someone asked Shade about her thoughts on the recognizable style of their music, and she probably gave the best possible answer. Isn't that wonderful? You always know what you are going to get when you buy a new album. Next, we have my favorite album, Love the Looks. Another highly acclaimed album with multi-platinum status, the band's second Grammy for No Ordinary Love and a very successful tour in support of this album. This is no ordinary love. And after all this, Shade disappeared from the rudder for eight years. No ordinary love. During this period, the press went crazy and there were enormous amount of conspiracy theories about what Shada was doing. And as almost always, this was all wrong. Let's hear out her reasons why she went away. You have to not be scared to go away. Obviously, I think a lot of people are frightened that if they go away, if they disappear for a while, everything will crumble. They'll come back and there's no place for them. I think the break, actually, being away was good for us all, you know, because uh, it gives you a chance to realize why you're doing what you do and actually want to do what you do. Shade was obviously not afraid to go away, as they were sure whenever they are back, they will have their place. And this is precisely what happened in 2000s, when they released their fifth studio album, Lovers Rock. You think I'd leave your side, baby? Again, I can probably say that this album is also one of my favorites of all time. The results were just as usual. Exceptionally, critics claim millions of sold copies worldwide, huge successful tour, and another break, this time for 10 years. I'm the king of sorrow. During this break, the press did not go crazy. Everyone knew that the band would be back whenever they had things to say. King of and the wait was over in 2010, with their sixth and so far their latest album, Soldier of Love. I've lost the use of my heart. I believe that there is no need to mention that I consider this album as well as one of my most favorite. Sorry, I just can't pick up one album when we're talking about Shade. But I'm still alive. Just like the other times, the results were exceptional. Usually, if the artist or the band release new material after 10 years of silence, people call it a comeback. This is a very popular thing nowadays with the releases from The Beatles or Rolling Stones. But this is not the case for Shade. I'm a soldier it is worth to mention Soldier of Love tour specifically, as it was huge. I had tickets for one of the concerts, but due to the work-related emergency, I was not able to go, and I will probably never forgive myself for that. By the way, you can check most of the performances from this tour on their official YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description below. And if you have not seen it, please give yourself a pleasure as it is a combination of a visual and sound masterpiece. And now we are in another long break. Her latest photo was released in 2020 during COVID for Vogue magazine. At this point, I just think that she did the impossible. She became a global music icon, but is still living a normal life. What is important that this story is not over yet, just in their style. In 1977, in a beautiful Chateau Miraval in France, 
the Miraval Studio was founded, which later became legendary over the years. The list of artists that recorded their songs there include ACDC, Pink Floyd, Muse, Sting, and of course, Shade. In 2000s, the studio was not operating, but in 2012, one famous person bought Chateau Miraval and updated the whole studio, making it one of the most advanced studios in the world. The person is Brad Pitt, and yes, it is a chateau that he was fighting for with his ex-wife Angelina Jolie. Anyway, in an interview, Brad Pitt mentioned that the first band that started working on a new music in this newly renovated studio is Shade. While I was working on this episode, I have learned a lot, and one of the most important messages for me is just like she said in an interview. Everything that I do completely dominates my life. Everything that I do completely dominates my life. So let's do something that we enjoy dominating in our life. Don't forget to write down in the comments what is your favorite song or album by Shade. Hit like, share, you know what to do, and let the music inspire you the most. See you next time.